Hey, Katie from the Wolfpack here, and I wanted to highlight some of my favorite strategies and tips that Mr. D shares in his book, Teach, Creating Independently Responsible Learners. That's what it's all about. And first thing I want to say is I wish I'd read this years ago, but I didn't. And so if you have, um, I don't know, like tweens, maybe even a little bit younger in tweens, certainly getting into the teens. If you've got kids in those ranges, um, I suggest contemplating picking up this book. Um, my son is almost an adult now, and I feel like we have succeeded at creating an independently responsible learner. Um, but I wish I'd had these tips and strategies just concrete like this for me for us so that we could have kind of gone through that process a little bit uh, more simple. So anyhow, so first, um, what I will say is like, Mr. D is very clear in saying like, as you're reading this book, you're looking for little nuggets that you can use. Things that you find, like you're looking for gold nuggets as you're reading the book. Um, just like with any curriculum that you use for your students, this book is not going to apply 100% to you. Not everything in it's going to work for you or for your students. So as you're reading through it, look for the things that you're like, hmm, yes, that makes sense to me. Or I think that's going to work with my student. I want to try that out. Um, so I go into it knowing that. Um, I like how Mr. D at one point early on talks about how when he's talking about his um, like first group of math students that he was trying to reach, he talked about a strategy that he ended up going to and what he found is that they started to teach themselves the solution and to finding the problem in math um, or to fixing the problem in math they started to, to be able to um, teach themselves how to do it as opposed to him teaching them how to do it obviously there's steps that got them to this place but I know that that's something that really that resonated with me because my son in ironically um, as he's doing math, that's what he does because of the system, the program that we use. If he makes a mistake, he's able to go back to his work and rework it and find his own mistake and figure out where he went wrong and um, come up with the correct solution. And I, that is something to me that has moved him um, firmly into the direction of being an independent learner. So um, I really like that he pointed that out. Um, let's see. Oh, also using different strategies that are available. So one of the things that I always say as a teacher, um, when I'm talking to other homeschool moms is like, know what kind of learner you are, because chances are you're going to rely on that style when you're trying to teach your kids. So what you really need to be doing is pulling styles and other strategies that work for them. It's not really about you, it's about them. So be doing that and then showing them how that they can, like coaching them along, understanding how if they're not quite getting something, there are ways and strategies and different things that they can do to try to learn it on themselves. Um, and interactive learning, I like, so Mr. D teaches math classes and he teaches them um, a couple of ways. He teaches line online. I'm sorry. He teaches live online, but he also has videos. And in this, he's actually explaining how with a pre-recorded video, you can actually, um, he, he figured out a way to like turn that into an interactive lesson that is really powerful for the students. It's not just like, um, you know, lecture, 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 take notes, supposedly getting the information into your brain. It's like interactive. Um, and Obviously, there's a thousand different ways to make something interactive. And his point is, is like, if he can make it interactive with a pre-recorded video, then, you know, you can make almost anything interactive. You might need to think outside the box to do it, but, but being interactive in a lesson, um, when you're trying to learn something, obviously takes your learning to the next level. And if you're thinking outside the box to show a student how to make something interactive, they'll start thinking outside the box themselves and like, hmm. I'm trying to understand this process. What can I do to make it interactive so that it helps me understand better? And then, this is my last one, no, two more. Um, oh, I, I love this one. 
have your student teach you what it is that they are supposed to be learning, have them teach it to you. And I think this is brilliant. And I think this is something you can do with kids of all ages with my son when he was itty bitty. Um, he, you know, he's an only child, so he didn't have any siblings to teach. Um, but at the end of the week, I would um, have him show me and his father the things that he had learned. Um, and like, you know, he would like go over everything that he had learned, but he also really loved to kind of like practice that by putting out his stuffed animals. And he would literally like teach his stuffed animals the things he had learned during the week. Obviously that's a very basic level compared to what Mr. D is talking about, but it really is significant. And Mr. D talks about how, if you think about, you know, so many homeschool moms say that they have learned more teaching their kids than they ever did in school themselves. And I'm sure that that is, I mean, I know it's a common thing. Um, I've said it myself hundreds of times. And so if you think about that, it's powerful. So give that to your student as well. Like have them learn, make that part of the learning process that they have to turn around and teach it to you because you learn so much more when you're actually teaching it. And up oh, two more points, sorry. Um, learning from mistakes. I mean, yeah, if you take the time to stop and learn from your mistakes, it's, it's highly valuable as parents. I know that we struggle to allow our kids to make mistakes sometimes, but, um, yeah, let them make mistakes and then coach them along to learn from those mistakes. I don't mean lecture them, um, but like help them understand that they need to figure out how to learn from their mistake. And the okay, last one, so we can find my poster card. Um, oh yeah, we talked about this one a little bit already. It comes up in another chapter, but like learning how to think starts with knowing your learning style. So um, I talked about how you need to know your learning style, but your, your students need to know their learning style so that they can understand how their brain thinks, how their brain functions, how their brain takes information in, how it processes that information. Um, and then in different situations, you might be pulling on a different learning style. So like have them understand their learning styles. So again, this book, it's an easy read. It's a very um, like conversational the way it's written. So it's a really quick, easy read and um, it's filled with things that can really help you create independently responsible learners. Bye.